practice and your spirituality is the center of your life and it's something that you hold dear just like your relationship with your parents your children you hold that dear and so when that changes there's a grieving that happens this loss of history this loss of our normal see and, and when that happens within a congregation you're not going through it alone you're going through it as a body mm -hmm. and uh, as you point out and i don't want to get too far ahead of, of the the idea of merging with grace but as you point out um, this merging takes place in a context of fellowship and love the body of christ mm -hmm. and while you may have two separate histories and while you may have uh, two separate buildings and two separate pastors, as, as the first chapters of your book point out, the, the, the whole story of the faith is the story of a family of faith, God's family. Mm -hmm. So why we call one another brothers and sisters. Amen, amen. Um, but still, when two separate institutions are about to come together, mm -hmm. um, I'm rambling now, so I want to move uh, to the idea of marriage because that's one of the themes that you pull, th uh, that pulls through the, the chapters, mm -hmm. um, that this merger takes place, this, this combining of two institutions into one that you assume is going to be stronger and head toward the future with God's grace. Um, talk a little bit about the, the parallel with with marriage between uh, a man and a woman, well, between two people who love one another, this idea of uh, doing it uh, advisedly and mm -hmm. with thought and with prayer. Mm -hmm. and I, I use the metaphor, uh, the marriage metaphor, because it is a coming together. As a matter of fact, when you do the vows, you at, at you, as you share with couples, you do say, you know, marriage is not to be entered into lightly. It is to be entered into reverently, not uh, unadvisedly. Yeah. And then as you close those vows, you say, you know, this is what God has brought together. And, and you, you know, so, so entering into this merger has to be done with the concept and the understanding that this is what God has brought together and let no man um, put us under. And, and, and so utilizing that metaphor, we're, we're bringing uh, these two bodies together, uh, just like a, a relationship when you're marrying a couple. They have different histories. They have different perspectives. And so you're bringing these two bodies together with the hope that we develop a common goal. Yeah and with the hope that there's an understanding that God is bringing us together for that common purpose. And so we become one, one body. Um, and, and that is challenging without that common goal and that common understanding that God is bringing us together and we're in this because of God. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, so you worked through your doctoral thesis, mm -hmm. which then became the book. Mm -hmm. um, and practically speaking, Lincoln Avenue and Beautiful Plain merged. Mm -hmm. um, you spoke of, and when I, when I opened the program, I talked about some of these little churches, the struggling churches, mm -hmm. uh, who may be coming into, into a, a merger situation out of weakness mm -hmm. rather than offering their strengths. Mm -hmm. And you said that really, that's not, you're not merging in order to save your church. Mm -hmm. You're not m merging for those reasons. You're merging in order to further your church's ministry. Mm -hmm. and, and, and really, that's uh, uh, one of the things that I learned early on is that if congregations are seeking merger for survival, uh, to, to stay alive, uh, it's going to be a very difficult battle that will result in ultimate death of anybody that's involved in that particular process, mainly because you're entering in it with the idea of I want to hold on to everything that I have and I'm not willing to give up anything, but I want everything. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, so with, with, with that, ministry is not uh, at the forefront. 
uh, what's at the forefront is your survival, your, your identity. Yeah. That's at the forefront. And so what happens is that survival becomes paramount. Uh, and that's not going to help facilitate life in uh, emerging congregation. Yeah. When you look at what has happened now with the formation of the Cornerstone Community Church, mm -hmm. uh, have you seen these two churches blend together mm -hmm. successfully? I, I know I'm asking you to make a judgment. I, well, I, I, the, 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 the process, uh, and this is why the book, uh, I, I, I thought I needed to write the book because during the process, the blending didn't work out as well as we would hoped. Uh, it wasn't a smooth con, uh, uh, transition. Mm -hmm. and, and so there were challenges uh, along the way. Now we're at the point of we're here, uh, we're doing ministry, uh, and this is our calling now. But this is year, this will be year six of, of, of ministry. Uh, and it's about turning a corner. And so the blending process in the beginning uh, was was not um, very good. Um, it, it, it was a lot of family fighting yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. and not fighting in the sense of fist and and weapons, but uh, taking, see no bruises, right? <laughs> <laughs> but taking uh, particular stances on issues. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, Pastor Turner and I, we developed a whole new worship service that neither church uh, had uh, been doing. And so we thought with this new style of worship, uh, it would help the congregation see that there is no siding. Mm -hmm. But you see, when you're sitting back and you don't know what the other congregation has gone through, what their particular uh, history is, your perception is if this knew they did it. Uh, and, and so this is something that they did, now we have to do. It, that's not the case, but that's your perception yeah. because yeah. this is something that you haven't done before and now we have to do what they're doing. And so a lot of that was taking place yeah. uh, during the process, which made the blending process challenging. And let me talk about health uh, because I said congregations that merge for survival uh, are, are not geared for life. Uh, however, on the other hand, uh, healthy congregations look at mergers not for survival, but to do ministry. Mm -hmm. And so healthy congregations enter into the relationship with uh, the concept of working together, and we're going to do whatever it takes to do God's work. But if you are both healthy congregations, why would you merge? Uh, looking at our time, looking at what's happening in the landscape of Christianity. Um, healthy congregations are, are all around us. Uh, health is not uh, measured in finances. Health is not measured in membership. Health is measured in how you deal with conflict, how you work through challenges. And so healthy ministry said, well, this is a challenge that we have. Instead of pointing fingers uh, to a person, let's figure out how we can utilize our resources to move forward in this particular challenge. And that idea of uh, new uh, wineskins um, that you also mentioned in your book, uh, when your two churches merged, they did not keep the name of either church, mm -hmm. but created a new name for mm -hmm. a new church. Mm -hmm. Uh, that said, now, a Beautiful Plain was a predominantly African-American church, and I'm assuming Lincoln Avenue was a predominantly white congregation. It was, a, it was uh, mixed, um, yeah. yes. So your current church is? Um, it's still a predominantly African-American church. We have uh, other ethnicities, but the largest group is African-Americans. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and that um, makes you a strong witness mm -hmm. there in the municipal part of, of Endicott, mm -hmm. but also you're drawing folks, I assume. Uh, I mean, you had folks from Binghamton coming, so the church uh, certainly has got a wider, pardon the expression, service area than... Well, uh, we, we, than, we minister in Broome County. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> we, we, yeah. we do, and we're tied to organizations uh, in Broome County 
throughout the county while our immediate context is in Endicott and Endicott needs uh, ministry we are not restricted to Endicott so and I saw you had a chow uh, distribution mm -hmm. area mm -hmm. there at, at your church mm -hmm. yeah. that's that's one of the opportunities uh, because what beautiful playing wasn't able to do is have the facility that would enable us to do uh, have a food pantry uh, on a consistent basis on a regular basis and so some of the things that are new here at Cornerstone uh, is uh, the the chow ministry the food uh, pantry ministry um, beginning in in the early uh, stages of the church, uh, our missions ministry realized that we were in a uh, area that was really um, dilapidated. Uh, people needed everything. Yeah. And so one of the things that the missions ministry thought that they could do with was, uh, this was before Chow came on board, was to begin uh, serving lunches for people on the weekend that lived in one of the hotels uh, that was serviced by social services. And so that's, that's been going on now for five years. Uh, and it's growing. We have we serve two whole, two of the hotels in Endicott that social services um, supports uh, on weekends uh, for lunches, um, and so that's an outgrowth of new ministry yeah. uh, that's taking place in the area. Which is kind of what you're hoping that um, uh, a merger will accomplish is to strengthen the ministries that mm -hmm. already exist, mm -hmm. but also to look at your neighborhood, to look at at the folks that are in need and that you can, you can help. Mm -hmm. um, the book is called Merging with Grace, A Healthy Transformation. Mm -hmm. And our guest today has been uh, Greg Johnson, the Reverend Dr. Greg Johnson, whose doctoral uh, thesis led to uh, the publishing of, of this book about merging. And he's the pastor of the Cornerstone Community Church at the corner of Lincoln Avenue and uh, uh, East Main Street. It used to be on my paper when I was a kid. <laughs> Uh, I'm Jeff Kellum, thank you for joining us uh, for the Encounter program and encouraging you to be with us again next week. Encounter brought to you uh, by the Broome County Council of Churches. So again, thank you for joining us and uh, in the coming week, I hope that you'll be gentle with people and with yourself. <laughs>